His Royal the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular stipulating the official holiday of Eid Al Fitr for 1437 Hijri. On the occasion of Eid Al Fitr, all of the kingdom's ministries, directorates, and institutes shall take a recess on the first day of Eid and the two days following it. So that the Eid is on Wednesday, then a weekend following working day will be a holiday as well, and that's Sunday. His Royal the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah, Speaker of the Shura Council Ali Al Saleh, MPs, and a number of senior state officials. During the meeting, His Royal affirmed that the recent terrorist attacks require more vigilance in order to maintain the security of the kingdom and its social unity and called on enhancing Arab joint cooperation as to overcome all challenges that aim to threaten the nation. His Royal affirmed the kingdom's constant keenness to maintain its security and stability. He also added that Bahrain is secured thanks to its citizens' keenness to enhance unity and cohesion, in addition to supporting development efforts. His Royal has highlighted Bahrain's long history and stressed the importance of preserving national gains in order to achieve the best for the kingdom and its citizens, and added that the Bahraini society became a role model of peaceful coexistence and that any attempt that aims to target its unity will not be tolerated. His Rohanis then lauded the remarkable cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and affirmed the government's keenness to enhance such cooperation aiming at achieving the best for the kingdom and its citizens. He also expressed his thanks and appreciation for the legislative authorities' support to all initiatives that aim to enhance cooperation between the two authorities.
His Royal uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the Libya Palace today, the weekly cabinet meeting. His Royal extended congratulations to His Majesty the King on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, wishing him many happy returns. He also congratulated His Royal the Crown Prince, the people of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on the occasion. The cabinet then condemned the terrorist attack in East Acre area which killed one female citizen, asking Allah to rest her soul in peace and wished the wounded a speedy recovery. The meeting affirmed the government's continuity with its firm measures in dealing with terrorism and its financing and whomever provides it with religious or political cover. It expressed thanks and appreciation to friendly and brotherly countries as well as to regional and international organizations that condemned the terrorist attack and voiced their support to Bahrain in combating terrorism. The cabinet welcomed Bahrain's recent achievement in the field of human and child rights following the election for the membership of the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child, the CRC, represented by Emily Dosari as an independent expert for the committee, which reflects the international community's confidence in Bahrain's honorable record in human and child rights. The meeting expressed appreciation for the tremendous efforts of the former Arab League Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al-Arabi during his term, commending his contributions in supporting joint Arab action. The meeting also welcomed the newly appointed Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghaith, voicing confidence in his ability to perform the tasks assigned to him thanks to his diplomatic experience. In regards to national issues, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister order to set a governmental plan to develop shores and increase waterfronts for citizens. The Prime Minister also directed to further upgrade medical and therapeutic services so as to provide the people with comprehensive health care. The cabinet meeting continued discussing issues and memoranda listed on its agenda and have taken a number of decisions. The meeting assigned the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs to study the issue of signing the statute of the Arab Court for Human Rights. The cabinet commended the initiative of His Majesty the King of establishing the court in Bahrain following the approval of the Arab League Council. The meeting also approved issuing two decisions by the Minister of Forks, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning regarding the acquisition of real estate and head for public interest within the development of Hedring Road Project. The cabinet followed up implementing its decision to correct the status of industrial areas in line with the law to regulate industrial zones. The meeting was briefed by the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism on a number of economic indicators of 2016, including the growth of the gross domestic product with percentage of 4.5% in comparison with the same period last year, in addition to a decrease of trade deficit by 37% of the same period and an increase of local and international investment worth 254 million Bahraini dinars. The Minister said 61 industrial projects have been approved worth the investment value of 1.3 billion Bahraini dinars, while 58 investment permits have been granted worth a total value of 1.3 billion Bahraini dinars, which is expected to create 1,520 jobs, 733 of which will be for Bahrainis. The cabinet meeting also discussed six draft proposals presented by the Representatives Council. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa met yesterday evening at Rafah Palace the Chairman and Managing Director of Lulu Group, Mr. Yusuf Ali. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of continuing to strengthen the Kingdom's investment environment in order to attract businesses and support job creation. The Crown Prince highlighted the important role diverse investment plays in driving economic development and enabling sustainable development. He, the growth of Lulu Group within Bahrain, he said, following the recent opening of another other branch, it's reflective of the growth of the kingdom's retail sector and investments capacity, which has a pivotal role in creating high-quality job opportunities. Mr. Yusuf Ali expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and praised his support to further developing the kingdom's business and investment environment. Bahrain has affirmed full support to Kuwait and all measures taken to safeguard security and peace confront terror plots aimed at destabilizing the country and threatening the safety of its people and deter attempts to create chaos or strife. It also reiterated support to the steps taken by Kuwait to protect its achievements and institutions and ensure continuity of the development process under the leadership of the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. Bahrain underlined deep rooted and historical relations with Kuwait, reiterating its support to the Kuwaiti people in 
all efforts to root out all forms of violence and terrorism and drain its sources and expressing condemnation of any attempt to jeopardize the security and stability of Kuwait or threaten its national unity. Bahrain affirms that the Gulf Cooperation Council will go ahead with all strength and resolve in fighting terrorism in order to eradicate this dangerous phenomenon that threatens the achievement of the GCC people. In a telephone call with the Kuwaiti Deputy Premier and Minister of Interior, Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Sabah, Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa praised success of the Kuwaiti security forces in arresting members of terrorist groups, voicing support for the procedures taken by the Ministry of Interior of Kuwait in maintaining security and dealing firmly with threats to the country. The Interior Minister stressed full security cooperation between both countries, congratulating his Kuwaiti counterpart on the advent of Eid al Fitr and expressing good wishes to the brotherly Kuwaiti people for further prosperity. Now, the moon sighting panel at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs announced that tomorrow, Tuesday, will be the 30th of Ramadan. And the day after tomorrow, Wednesday, will be the first day of Eid al-Fitr for the Hijri year 1437. In a statement, the council announced that the moon sighting panel has convened at the Supreme Council of Justice building this evening in order to receive testimonies regarding the sighting of the Shawal Crescent Moon. As no one came forward to testify, therefore tomorrow, Tuesday, will be the 30th of Ramadan, and the day after, Wednesday, will be the first day of Eid al-Fitr. On the occasion, the Council wished His Majesty the King, the Royal Highnesses, the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander for his Deputy Premier, and members of the Royal Family, as well as the people of Bahrain and Arab and Islamic nations, best wishes and many happy returns.